Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Adam Burke from bangthebook.com coming to you with my Tuesday three pack here. My three favorite plays of the day for Tuesday, March 12th. One in the NBA, two on the college basketball side. Very light card here tonight. Only a handful of conference tournaments going on. Five conference tournament championship games. An average size card in the NBA. A little bit of a bigger card in the NHL, but a lot of books slow to post numbers here this morning. So uh, doing the best I can with the three picks for today's three-pack. Over at bangthebook.com, phenomenal work being done by everybody involved over there. I've got conference tournament previews up for all 32 conference tournaments, all 19 of them that start here this week. We've got daily college basketball picks from Kyle Hunter, daily NHL picks from uh, Parker Michaels. We've got daily content from Alan Moody, Admir Algic, Corey Paps, Jonathan Willis across the NBA and college basketball. Preview up for this weekend's Players Championship as well as my daily fantasy golf picks for this week. Uh, we've got NASCAR on a weekly basis, UFC on a weekly basis, and of course, all of my Major League Baseball content in the lead up to the season, 30 MLB season win totals, division futures, pennant futures, World Series futures, Cy Young MVP, home run king. Head on over to bangthebook.com. Make sure you check those out. All right, let's get into the Tuesday three-pack here. My three favorite plays of the day for March 12th. We start in the association with game 535, 536. The Cleveland Cavaliers on the road at the Philadelphia 76ers. Sixers a 14-point favorite here tonight. Total 222 and a half. Cleveland, of course, in a back-to-back -back with travel off yesterday's big home win over the Toronto Raptors. Pretty happy flight for the Cavaliers making that late-night arrival into Philadelphia. Are the Sixers really motivated to blow out the Cavs here? Now, maybe it just happens naturally. That wouldn't surprise me at all because Philadelphia – a vastly superior team to Cleveland, but Joel Embiid just came back over the weekend coming off of about a month-long layoff. He's on some minutes restrictions right now as they try to get him back into the fold. They were down eight at halftime in that game to the Pacers, then wound up playing really, really well in the second half. And the Cavaliers, since the All-Star break here, they're actually five and four straight up, 111.2 points per game, 8.2 points per game higher than in the first half. Big reason why is because they're shooting a lot more three-pointers now, averaging 38.3 three-point attempts per game over their last nine games. They're also getting to the line quite a bit more. They're making about uh, just under six more three-pointers per game. So that accounts for the points per game difference. But you know, the Cavs maybe figuring some things out offensively, maybe some of the young guys kind of coming together, maybe some of the trades that they made sort of uh, allowing guys to gel a little bit. Or maybe they're just tired of losing games. They don't want to be one of those tanking teams here in the NBA. But the Cavs playing a lot better here since the All-Star break. They're still a pushover most nights. But, you know, a la the Phoenix Suns out in the Western Conference, a lot of teams overlooking those teams that appear to be tanking or those really bad teams. You kind of wonder here for Philadelphia if they are fully invested. Fifth game in eight days for the Sixers here. Again, Embiid just coming back. I'm going to take Cleveland tonight. It's very scary. Teams playing a home road back-to-back -back this year with no rest are not very good against the spread. Uh, so I fully understand that. I'm fully taking that into consideration with this handicap. But I just don't feel like the Sixers are going to be all that motivated. Cavs playing a lot better. 14 points is a big number. We'll take Cleveland here tonight, number 535, plus 14 against Philadelphia. Transition over to the college side of things now as we start with a first-round game in the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. Game 609-610 between Appalachian State and Louisiana Monroe. The Warhawks an eight-point favorite here. Total 154 for this one. Both games in the regular season, pretty high-scoring affairs between these two teams. The first-round Sunbelt games are on-campus sites. So I am seeing a place like Bart Torbick has an interesting overlay on this game where his line is minus four, the market is minus eight. The reason for that is because he had a little bit of an oversight not realizing this game was on Monroe's campus. So the Warhawks are at home tonight, and that makes a big difference here in this game because Louisiana Monroe, the 39% and three-point percentage for the season overall. So they've been a very, very good jump shooting team, but at home, they're shooting 42.5% from three, sixth best in the country. They're 25th in turnover percentage on offense. So they take care of the basketball, and they make a ton of shots in particular at home. Appalachian State here 2-12 and 12 away from home on the season. 51.2% uh, effective field goal percentage 
for the season ranks 153rd, but that drops to 49.5% on the road. They shoot worse from three, shoot worse from two on the road. They're 304th in the country in defending three-pointers. Monroe shoots them at a high rate and at a very successful rate at home. In the two games these two teams played in the regular season, Appalachian State did beat Monroe by one point at home. I believe that was 85-84. to 84. Lost by six on the road, so I know that's within this number, but they allowed 1.234 and 1.182 points per possession to Monroe in those two games. Monroe fifth in the country in free throw percentage. So if this game devolves into a foul fest at the end, and it very well could being a conference tournament game, Monroe should be very good at the charity stripe, salting this game away, putting themselves in a position to cover the number. Uh, maybe this line does come down if Torvik doesn't adjust his projection. But I'll take Louisiana Monroe minus the eight tonight. Appalachian State, you know, a very bad road team. They have a decent home court advantage because of the elevation, but they've not played well on the road. They don't defend the three well. Monroe shoots the three very well, uh, you know. And you kind of wonder, too, with these really bad teams in these conference tournaments, how invested are they to keep the season going? I don't know what that is like for Appalachian State. I would expect Monroe being at home. They want to take this thing to uh, New Orleans. So give me Monroe tonight, minus the eight, number 610 in the rotation order. Finally, we finished in the SWAC, the Southwestern Athletic Conference game, 613-614. Arkansas Pine Bluff on the road at Grambling State. Grambling a six-point favorite, total 135 and a half here. This is a really interesting situation because Grambling would have been the number one seed in last year's SWAC tournament, but they were ineligible for the postseason because of their APR violations. Now they're in the conference tournament this year as a number four seed. And quite frankly, when you look at this conference as a whole, they're a little bit under as a number four. They're not as good as the top two teams in this conference. They probably should have been a three seed, but didn't take care of their affairs against Jackson State. So Jackson State winds up being the three seed. But this is a bad defensive conference overall. And Grambling plays pretty good defense. They're 11th in the country in effective field goal percentage on defense, 22nd in three-point percentage defense, and they're fifth in the country in three-point percentage on offense. So they shoot the three ball well, they defend the three ball well, and like Louisiana Monroe, Grambling State is at home here uh, in the first round of this conference tournament. Arkansas Pine Bluff is a bad team offensively and defensively. They did beat Grambling at home but they lost by 24 on the road in the two regular season meetings. Pine Bluff, 285th in two-point percentage, 289th in percentage of three-point attempts. So they shoot the three better. They just don't shoot a whole lot of them. They did play a tougher non-conference schedule, which does skew some of their road metrics here. But Grambling State has to be supremely motivated. Again, they were the conference regular season champion last year. Couldn't go into the postseason tournament because of those APR violations. Everybody's motivated to try and get that bid. But I think for Grambling State here at home with a pretty experienced team, with a team that does very well at the three-point line, I like them here tonight minus the six in game number 614. So my three plays here today for the Tuesday three-pack are number 535, the Cleveland Cavaliers plus 14 in the NBA. Louisiana Monroe minus eight, number 610 in the first round of the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. Then Grambling State, number 614, minus the six in the first round of the SWAC tournament. I'm Adam Burke for Bang the Bull.